welcome back to Warframe. So, <laughs> I did a bit of um, checking, and uh, I don't know why I can't redo this or this. So, I can't actually do the Deveri Paradox. Good job there, DE. <laughs> but. I am at least able to show you a bit of the gameplay for Daviri, because that's the normal thing here. And this is me with a lot of intrinsics, but I will be going into this solo just to, like, basically show off a miniature version of what it's like. And yes, a bit of a spoiler right there, you get a horse. Okay, so first, gonna go over here. So this is the weapon you start with in Daviri, the Sun and Moon. A, the only dual katanas, or nikanas out there. And then we got um, Sympath, um, Azathane, Idun and Sampotas, I don't know, for um, unlockable melees. Soon we're going to get another one right about here that is a um, shield and mace, as they called it, but technically the stance is probably going to be for a sword and shield. Um, and you don't get this option to start with, you have to unlock it, but these are decrees. So, decrees have many different functions to them. I'm gonna grab that, because it'll be helpful. So in here, again, upgrade from decrees, lets you try out any Warframe that's in their rotation. And by the way, when you're playing through here, I recommend coming over here. It has a daily cooldown of like 20 hours but you'll be able to just come back and get some free loot. So frames right now, Loki, Lavos, Banshee, Wisp, and Protea. Now, uh, unfortunately, I kind of got rid of my Banshee. So that's why they're not, like, customized like these guys are. So... Yeah, why not? I'll play around with Banshee just to show her off. So, Banshee is a sound-based Warframe. Her passive is that she silences any weapon. Uh, I'll go with a Ferox to show it off. I could go with the, yeah. Um, I'll go with the Compressa. And my Prisma Obex. So the Obex are just a pair of gauntlets. The Harbinger of Joy. Unfortunately, Mathilla was convinced she knew what would make people happy better All than right. they did. So you cannot dwell after your completing the forever. tutorial, you get um like all of these abilities oh, here. Worry. What the heck are you doing here, sir? What are you looking at? Yeah, I told you not for kids. <laughs> but yeah, you get to summon a horse, um, use an ability to, like, guide you, a quick heal, and, uh, right, a smoke bomb. Uh, just gonna show this off. This is a outside of Daveri mechanic, the Ravenous Golden Maw. It is a Orkin made, um, like, fish thing? I don't really know. And, uh, it's, it was originally introduced in a different, uh, story. But for here, you get to swim around, catch fish. And if you collect enough of them, you get a you get two um, resources out of it. And there we go. And of course, that you can do it. You can do to get a decree. 
each spot will give you a decree, but only one. Good job clipping through the terrain there, Greg. Really screwing with the camera, huh? Alright, so I recommend fighting this guy off the horse. Ow. Good thing I got that health regen upgrade. So yeah, I'm using heavy attacks for this. <laughs> Wanna try that again? You wanna smack me with that horse again? Okay. Ow. Get off that horse. So yeah, he basically acts like the sword-wielding Dax around here. Out of it. To the happy mind, all things seem simple. Okay, fine. Problems could be solved simply. And I have an upgrade giving me um, more health per decree. Okay, uh, crit steal double damage. So yeah, I'm just gonna leave that, um, bow wielder over there. Now, a cool thing about this little horse, as you saw by the loading screen, it's not just a horse. If you do, again, I'm on, um, PlayStation controller here, and I'm going with default setup. But if you go with L1 and X, or hold X, then... Royal mazes teach independence and build character. Sprout swings. Don't give up. Keep trying. You can just fly wherever. Huh. Now, part of the whole thing with Daviri is, um, it isn't, like, time-based, like, um, like the other open-world areas, but there are some time-based mechanics being, um, like, those spear guys that attacked me at earlier when I first came in. They will augment with um, different elements depending on um, the like time. Basically, get off me! Had this off. I'm not in the mood. Stinking nightmare things. Uh, is it all the way over here? So this is the maze, uh, like, activity type, basically. You're having to run around down- there it is. Yeah, you're having to run around down here just, like, shooting all these. Don't know why I can't run past that. And once it's all done, you just come back over here, alright, and there we go. And this is just one of the mazes. There's a few of them. Thrax, I swear to Okay, uh, crit steal, extra damage as cold. So difficult? I foresee your life journey taking you into the Undercroft. Don't dwell on Okay, so this is the second part of Daviri. Now, as I said, you get to try out Warframes. That is in two ways. You can have, um, the transference um, ability charged up, which is the meter right above my abilities there. Hang on a second.
Just doing this real quick, just because it's on the way. This will give me another decree. It's just pick up three of these and decree. Where, where'd he go to? Eh, who cares? Alright then. Um, killing enemies restores health. Okay. So now that I've done that, this is the Undercroft. So, uh, okay, pause menu. So for um, Banshee, first ability, you shoot out a, a shockwave. Second one, you mark weak spots on enemies. Secrets lie Silence, um, you basically cause a stun, um, in a sense. I'm not entirely sure the full effect. And then Soundquake is her strongest move. She goes like this. And by strongest, I'm meaning like, um, area based. Because it's got a good, um, AoE to it, but as you can see, 61 is not strong against these enemy types. And by the way, because of this, I am running with a Banshee that is basically not modded correctly. Like, I know that they put on, like, mods that people early on would have, so that, like, if it's a Warframe you want to try, then there you go, free try. But they, they didn't really give a, like, good mod setup to them, is part of the problem, in my opinion. Like... Some frames, like Calervo, can have a good setup to them, but Banshee's not a strong frame, in my opinion, if she's not modded right. Oh, hello. Honestly, melee is a lot stronger sometimes. Oh, hey, a Thrax. <laughs> Pick his butt! <laughs> Alright, so this is the excavation activity type. If, for those who haven't played Warframe or haven't, like, reached that level yet. Um, so all it is. Um, defend this drill, and if you see guys with a battery, pick up the battery and take it back to the drill. If... Oh, really? <clears throat> if the, um, drill runs out of power, it just needs a quick battery. If it's at full, like it says right there, then giving it an additional battery will just give it, uh, like a refresh in its shield. And for this to, yeah, sorry, to continue with the, um, story, you need to, or not, story, um, to continue in Deviri, if you get this one, you need to complete three of them. A full completed drill gives, um, progress. I don't know why it teleported me over here, because I fell out. So yeah, three drills fully completed will allow you to um, continue through with this. <laughs> look at this! Like, look at the wild swinging they do on your airborne. <laughs> it just looks weird. And I don't think I even modded my 
um, Prisma Obex. Oh yeah, and basically this silence ability is just to, like, get, like, allies to have the silence effect on their weapons, I guess. It's basically to screw with enemy hearing. Because there, there are stealth mechanics in this game that you can utilize. At least stop hitting it! And yeah, as you can probably see when I use Soundquake, the energy for it drains over time. That's because it's a channeled ability. Channeled abilities do have a, like, specific cost to them, but they also have a drain over time effect. I right, another Thrax. Stomp that man into the stratosphere. <laughs> Extractor charge expended. God, I really need to work on getting the batteries for this easier. This video is basically just going to be a tutorial on how Daviri works, in a sense. And. This is just for this part. The circuit um, is exclusively you playing as a Warframe, and that can unlock things like um, parts for a Warframe, getting you a um, like augment mod for that frame, and then other things like if you enter Steel Path, which is a late game activity from literally completing every node on the star chart the, like the first time around, then you will be allowed to um, get incarnate weapons. And incarnate weapons um, take a um, normal weapon. You'll, you'll need the normal weapon for it, by the way. But it takes a normal weapon, gives it a um, special effect to it that you need to build up to by landing headshots with the weapon. If it's a melee, you need to get, I think the requirement was a five times uh, combo multiplier. Like as you can see right there for uh, my um, Obex, I have a seven times uh, combo multiplier. All it is for that part is just landing close range melee hits. There are some ranged melees, but some of them do not get combo count when, like, thrown, basically. And performing a heavy attack will consume all of your combo count. I'm not entirely sure the mechanics for combo count and all that, but, eh. Get off. Yeah, I'm not the best at keeping these things powered. And I'll admit, Banshee, I do like her, like, mechanics and all that, but I just don't really like her playstyle. Like, she can get stealth bonuses because of her silence, but if an enemy sees you, those bonuses go out of the window. And if you even, like, come in contact with a guy, some frames even lose the stealth bonus even if the enemy can't even see you. Because again, just come in contact, or if you hit them and it doesn't kill, like, that's not going to do anything. You have gained much. There we go. If you Out of the Undercroft, heading back to Daviri. Okay. Alright. Mathella's plans were failing. 
Uh, on crit, gain melee attack speed. Uh, okay, follow the marker, I guess. You can stand on your own two feet. Something's hidden nearby. You oh. are going to find it. All I had to do was find the little chest, yourself. okay. There we go. Just find the hidden treasure. It's not too bad. <laughs> Alright, I now have a cold aura. Cold procs on enemies reduce their movement speed. I think it also applies to their attack speed, but I'm not sure. I know cold effects on us can do something like that, but I'm not sure. Oh yeah, and if you perform a dodge roll while on your case, as it's called, then you can perform that uh, dash thing. The slam ability is a upgrade you need to unlock for it. Oh no. Pulling Indiana Jones. Come on. And finish. For that drifter, I shall break something of yours. Oh, will you really? And what would that be? Joy and madness are both known to laugh aloud. Mathilla leapt from one into the embrace. Really? The Back other. into the undercroft? All right. Basically in the same spot. All right. Um. Also, mechanic-wise, not for um Banshee, but um this weapon I'm using, the Ferox. So this will count as a rifle weapon for some mods. Okay, survival um, mission type. So all I have to do is just survive and kill enemies. Killing enemies can drop the thing I need for um, keeping up that timer over there. Now, the as I was saying, the mechanic for uh, this weapon type, spear guns, is um, if you press the right stick, you can throw it. And there are quite a few um, types out there with different mechanics. I think the Scourge would be considered the best one, because that one enemies in its AoE wherever it landed have a thing applied to them that makes your shots just home in on their head. And that is the weapon type of the frame Harrow. He loves crit. <laughs> and especially loves headshots. Yeah, I'm not the most accurate. <laughs> oh yeah, and... I don't know why the meter disappeared there. But, um... If your um, percentage for uh, the survival meter goes down below 70%, then you can use one of these to quickly um, just replenish it. But you will be stationary for a specific time. Ah. Xmas enemy types, I swear. So to be specific, Xmas enemy types are these normal enemy guys that um, have like a aura to them. That guy there is a Thrax, he doesn't have an aura to him. That guy right there with the like flame aura or whatever, that is a Xmas. 
And there are many different types. I guess that one right there with the spear could be considered a Blast Eximus? I forgot what the names were. But the guy with the sword, that is a Arsonist Eximus type. They will cause a fiery AoE that will deal knockback and apply a burn effect to you. Burn is a damage over time status that also reduces enemy armor while it's on them. It's basically like a damage over time version of the corrosive status effect. Corrosive removes more armor, um, but doesn't have the tick damage part. Oh, that meter's low. Systems charged with life support. Okay, time to show off the other weapon. Compressor. It's a bubble gun. Yes, it is literally shooting bubbles. This weapon is also the signature weapon of the frame Yureli. Mainly because Yureli can only use secondary weapons. And while this is a pistol, it would basically be considered a shotgun. It can't use shotgun mods, but it, it like, it's got secondary mods, and honestly, secondary weapons have some really good mods. And there's the arson effect I was talking about. Oh, a energy leech, Xmas. Just saw the effect. So yeah, if, the, if you're in that AOE when it like fully detonates on you, then it'll apply a um, magnetic proc, which drains your energy, and uh, I know it reduces your shields as well as causes that weird like staticky effect for your HUD. Like, if you use it on an enemy, the only effect of a magnetic proc is reducing their shields. Unless you're using a magnetic proc in uh, the um, Enclave, I think it was called, which is the PvP side of the game, then, like, it would do what it does to Warframes all the time. But honestly, Conclave is garbage. <laughs> All right, that was the last one. Um, I'm gonna re-roll these ones. Roll that. Um, each shot briefly increases fire. All right, before I take care of that, as in for the final objective, I'm just gonna get this one last um uh intrinsic to boost me up a bit Confused. Oh, there you are. Eh? Where is he going? Yeah, get out of here with your hit and run tactics. Alright. Melee attacks hit twice. Okay, and a real quick thing, um, so, hang on, I need to be out of this cave. Okay. Okay. So, 
around this area of the map would be um Calervo, the frame that I currently have equipped in normal and you would be able to fight him to get a resource but in joy and envy you cannot fight him in those time periods for like of the day but if you fight him in anger um sorrow and fear and i think there was one other I'm not sure. But, um, if you fight them in those, um, available times, then you will be able to actually, like, get resources from him. Oh. Okay, so... Let me get this. So, if you hit these... You'll be able to make a little speed ring. You need to catch up to this thing and use the Orvius when you're close enough. If I could actually get the speed boost. Okay, yeah, you need to throw the Orvius at those things and then speed through and latch on when it's glowing. And you gotta. Jump and throw your way over. If you wave. Huh? You can usually, like, try to skip over some. And as soon as you get to that one, take control. Now, use the beast. Destroy Thrax's bombs. Head over. Part of that one. I know it's showing a fire icon right there, but this thing does not... I don't think this thing uses a fire damage type. Yeah, it's got quite a limited range to it. Well, when you're in control. So now fly right up to here. And boss fight. I love this cutscene. Trying to get you off. Where'd it go? Ah, oh, there it is. And up, up, and there we go. Hi. All right. So, boss fight. For this boss, you have to hit these rings on its side and if you are on steel path you would have to go to the outer ring right back there because this area would become hazardous and you would need to ride your kaith to survive it i don't know how to ride the kaith in here Now, if your weapons are not strong enough, or none of your team's weapons are strong enough to basically just one-shot the rings, it will spawn a arc gun called the Imperator, the first arc gun you ever get, right here, one for each person, and it, it will deal a lot of damage to those rings. So yeah, once you clear all the enemies, gotta clear out those rings. Please stop moving. I keep hitting that rock. All right. So second time, you gotta take out these things. Find a way to stop its 
Yeah, Ferox is a lot stronger than my compressor. Ah! Stop it. Please stop hitting me. Alright, once all the wormlings are down, then you just hit the rings one last time. Goodbye, dragon. Emotion is no longer Grab your loot. The calm of the so every time you beat that thing, you get prevailed. 10 pathos clamps. 15, I think, if you are doing... Uh, oh, what was the... If you're doing steel path. Or maybe 20? I'm not sure. And Pathos Clamps can be used for buying things like these, or they can be used for Calervo or the other weapons in Teshin's cave. And then, once you're done with everything, you just head to right here and head out. And yes, as you can see right there for the Prisma Obex, my Compressa is maxed out. I don't know why it's saying 20 right there. But for if you have a weapon that is rank 0 or whatever, or like any rank that isn't 30, you will get affinity for it, which is XP. And as I was saying the other thing, the circuit, so... Um, in the circuit, as you can see right here, I selected Nidus for this circuit. Now, it is going away in 19 hours, 16 minutes as at the time of me showing this. So, the frames will rotate um, soon. But, um, as it shows right here, the ones that I saw were Nidus, Harrow, and Octavia available. And how it works, you do Undercroft activities, and you can get um, these things. This one is an Aura mod. Um, then you get the Neuroptic for the frame. Another Aura here. Um, this is a Ammo Mutation mod for bows. Um, the Chassis, another Ammo Mutation. There is the Augment, um, Ravenous. It is for his ultimate. It increases the chances of him getting these stacks, which are part of his passive. Um, then his systems, an arcane, which is really good for um, him and some other characters. And then the um, blueprint itself. Once you have crafted all three of these, then um, you can select the blueprint in your foundry and craft the frame itself. These take about a day to craft. A Warframe takes 72 hours to craft by the time you activate it. So, yes, frames do take a while to craft and they aren't at maximum capacity because one, you'll need to level them to 30 and two, you'll need to try and get this resource for them, which is, um, everybody just calls this a potato, but, um, it's either a Orican Catalyst or Orican Reactor, depending on if it's a weapon or a Warframe, and that will double the available mod capacity. And if a frame is at rank 30, it goes up to 60, increased further by your aura mod. <coughs> and then the other thing here is if you have Steel Path unlocked, you can select that. 
And as you can see, there is an Incarnan Boltor right there. And my other one is an Incarnan Lex. The Steel Path will give you five options available on, on, the, on the screen when you go to select. Your first one you select will be at rank five. So that's the one you want to get quickest, basically. The second one will be at rank 10, so that will be when you get it, like, fully done. Now, getting it early doesn't mean it's going to be weak. The stats do not change depending on how early you get it. It's just, like, letting you decide, okay, I want to get this art Incarnan first, or I want to get the second one first. So, you can easily just go through without any issue basically. <coughs> and, of course, with that, that is the, I guess, tutorial on Deviri Complete. And, <coughs> at one point in the game, so, when it comes to um, the Undercroft section for um, the circuit and um, both of these two right here, when it comes to the Undercross section, it can be any mission type, except for Disruption and um, the Assassinate mission types. But when the next update comes out with Wisp Prime and all that stuff, they will. They said they were working on um, releasing an Assassinate mission type in there. And that will just be, you go into that mission type, it puts you in a specific arena in there, basically. And it will be a boss from the star chart. The one that they were showing off is the boss Jackal. Now, before I go to do um, any more missions here, I'm just going to quickly show off one boss each time. And for right now, uh, I guess I'll go in alphabetical order, basically. So for now, I'm going to go with um, Ash Prime here. And we are going to go after the first boss you will ever fight, basically. So I have it set to friends only just so that I'm playing by myself, basically. Not having to wait on other people. But this will be Jackal. The next boss, which would be on Mercury, would be the boss that you would have fought in the um, Warframe side of the tutorial. In an attempt to exert power and authority, <coughs> the Corpus have continued to Now, Ash is a um, assassin frame, basically. His, um, his passive is slash procs, a damage type in the game and this is a physical damage type not elemental um slash procs last longer and deal more damage um hang on a second this little thing is a mechanic for um another mission <coughs> so going to make my way through his first ability is throwing um, kunai. The kunai, I believe, have a guaranteed slash proc. I'm not sure. Yeah, they're just dying way too quick for me to check. Uh, second ability, throwing down a smoke bomb, make yourself invisible. I believe there was an augment that lets you um, have it with teammates. Then third ability, teleport. You'll teleport onto an enemy. Um, making them vulnerable to finishers and there is a augment for it where you can just hit an enemy with it and it will make them more susceptible to uh, or not more susceptible you'll auto perform a finisher when you go to do it and then his ultimate you will look at targets um, I guess Okay, so you activate it. Oh, wait. I forgot I replaced it with mark, Marked for Death. 
So how his ultimate normally works is you activate it and you'll enter this like um stand or this trance state or whatever where like your vision gets all like gray or whatever. It doesn't like bleach out the colors, but it adds like a smoky effect. And the enemies other than this guy basically would have these marks applied to them whenever you put the marker over them. That mark, when you go to deactivate the ability, will cause all enemies marked to become vulnerable and take, um, or not take, and they will be able to be hit with damaging effects, um, from, uh, Ash, which scales with your melee, because he'll spawn shadow clones of himself to deal damage to enemies so that you can hit them with it. And the shadow clones will perform finishers. Okay, so the gimmick with this guy, I know I brought garbage weapons. I should have brought something stronger for a boss. But for this guy, so you need to take out um, his legs in order to get him. Once you take out um, enough of them and he goes up like that, you perform a finisher on him like that. And for this first one, he just goes to the next arena, which you just go like this. <laughs> just a little cutscene. And then you do the same thing all over again. And every time he goes up like that, each of his legs will fire off that laser there. All you have to do is just stay within the um, lasers, like in between the legs, basically. And as soon as he goes down like that, just jump over it. <coughs> okay. There is a electric fence right here, so I gotta be kind of close. He will shred my health bar if I'm not careful. Ash is not one of the tankier frames. He is definitely a stealth frame. Just going up and smacking his legs a bit till he pops. And yeah, each leg can only be like broken once, and then you have to do a different leg. Ow. And perform finisher. Don't know where I'm at. And that's him done. You get a um, sigil for beating the boss. And as soon as you finish, that one would give you parts for the frame Rhino. Rhino is one of the tankiest frames in the game, and he has one of the highest damage buffs being from his roar ability. Oh yeah, and every time you beat a boss, you'll get one of these. Your actions have consequences. That is a randomized thing that can happen on occasion. And I'm meaning like, the results of that. And just to like, make things easier on me, I'm just going to bring in something stronger for this. So. Chosen I'm going to make this quick and just go over this guy because uh, I didn't do it last time. But this is the captain that you would fight in the tutorial. 
I know, weird that they have him back on a mission node as a boss, I guess. But it's because um, he drops parts for a weapon called the Seer, and it can also give you... Um, I forgot what... I, I forgot what other rewards he gives. Oh yeah, and also, um, the frame I swapped to is the one known as Atlas. Atlas is a Earth-based frame, and by that I'm meaning, like, basically think of an Earthbender from Avatar The Last Airbender. His passive is he is immune to knockdowns while on the ground. So, like, if someone hits you with a knockback or something like that, you won't be hit with the knockback animation. You also won't be hit with self-knockback from explosive weapons. This man is also titled One Punch Man, because his first ability, you punch. <laughs> Um, oh yeah, and the other passive is, as you can see, that weird little meter above my, like, ammo and all that. That one is my rubble. So, whenever I pick up rubble, it grants me armor. Now, you may be asking, how do you get rubble? Well, that would be from petrified enemies. As you can see, I have 100 armor, but it'll slowly decay over time. Well, not slowly. Look at that. That's not even close to slow. And um, the other method is from his ultimate. His first ability is the punch, and its cost and damage increase if you combo it, but that's not saying much. Second ability, you put up a rock wall. You can reactivate it to send it rolling, unless you have the augment for it, or you can hit it with Petrify to restore some health to it and increase its damage um, when it goes out, as well as its speed and all that. Bosses, by the way, are immune to crowd control. And for the ultimate... Gone the Rocky Boys! <laughs> This summons rumblers that scale with some of your stats as, um, AI, excuse me, AI-controlled allies. They last for a duration, duration scaling with your ability duration stat, of course, and their damage scales with your ability strength, just like if you were doing it with your, um, like, well, as well as increasing their health. And they are, like, good for low-level activities, but, like, high-level activities, rumblers do not hit hard. And you can end the ability early by pressing it again, and it will destroy the rumblers, making them into rubble for you to pick up. If they get um, destroyed on their own by enemies, they still drop the rubble. Also, on activation, any nearby enemies will have the Petrify effect applied to them. So basically, it's like comboing your um, three and your ultimate together. The ultimate for casting them out, and on cast, casts Petrify, basically. Yes, it does have a higher cost, but, I mean, you're summoning in Rock Boys and basically casting your third ability. So, like, it's not much of a problem. There are two augments for the ability, too, as well. And those are, um, Rumbled. I think that is the one I'm thinking of for this. Um, and, well, actually, the only one I know of for by name is Rumbled. But, um, one of them spawns a bigger, um, Rock Golem, but only one. And he has three times the stats of them, meaning more damage and health. And then the second augment is you basically become a rumbler. You can't jump, but you got a rock shield that will go away after a while, and it'll also um, go away if you take enough damage. And 
you also have two new attacks. You can't use your guns, but you can either throw a rock or slam the ground with a melee hit, causing an AoE shockwave. So yeah, there is Atlas, and I will be going over Baruch next time. Alright, I will see you guys in the next one. See ya.